A 5,000 kilogram rail car hits a bumper or spring at 1 meter per second, and the spring compresses 0.1 meters. Assume no damping. Part A, find K. Because we have free undamped motion, we can model the situation using the differential equation mx double prime plus kx equals zero, where m is the mass and k is a spring constant. But let's first list the given information. We know the mass m is 5,000 kilograms, k is a spring constant. At time zero, we have zero displacement, and if x of zero equals zero, the initial velocity is one meter per second, indicated by x prime of zero equals one, and we have the spring compression equals 0.1 meters. The differential equation is 5,000 x double prime plus kx equals zero. If we divide through by 5,000, we have x double prime plus k divided by 5,000 times x equals zero. Notice here we have a second order linear homogeneous differential equation with constant coefficients, which we can solve using a characteristic equation, which is r squared plus k divided by 5,000 equals zero. Solving for r, we have r equals plus or minus i times the square root of k divided by 5,000. Recall when we solved these types of equations earlier and we had complex solutions, we assumed the form was alpha plus or minus beta i, which in this case, notice alpha is zero and beta is the square root of k divided by 5,000. For these application problems, sometimes the general solution is given using omega instead of beta but omega is the same as beta, which in this case is equal to the square root of k divided by m. So if there are two complex roots, the general solution is x of t equals a times cosine omega t plus b sine omega t, which can also be expressed as c times cosine of omega t minus gamma. Again, just remember omega is the same as beta, and the reason we don't see the exponential factors with base e is because alpha is zero and e to the zero is one. So in our case, we have the general solution as shown here. Because we have an initial value problem though, we will use the general solution written as a sum. And now we need to work on determining a and b. We first use the initial condition x of zero equals zero. We substitute zero for t and set it equal to zero. Well, if t is zero, here we have cosine zero, which is one. Here we have sine zero, which is zero, which just gives us a times cosine zero equals zero Simplifying, we have a equals zero, and therefore the general solution is just x of t equals b times sine of the square root of k divided by 5,000 times t. And now let's continue on the next slide. Remember the spring compression is 0.1 meters. This indicates the amplitude of the sine function must be 0.1. And because the spring is compressed first, we use b equals negative 0.1. So now we know x of t is equal to negative 0.1 times sine of the square root of k divided by 5,000 times t. Again, we know the amplitude is equal to the spring compression because x of t only involves the sine function, and then because of the behavior of the sine function, and we know the spring is compressed first, we know b is equal to negative 0.1. And now we find the derivative so that we can use x prime of zero equals one to determine k. x prime of t is equal to negative 0.1 cosine of the square root of k divided by 5,000 times t times the square root of k divided by 5,000. And now using x prime of zero equals one, we substitute zero for t and set it equal to one. Well, cosine zero is equal to one, giving us negative 0.1 times one times the square root of k divided by 5,000 equals one, and now we solve for k. We first multiply both sides by negative 10, then we square both sides, then we multiply both sides by 5,000, which gives us k, the spring constant is 500,000, which we can now substitute into x of t if we wish. For part b, how far does a spring compress when a 10,000 kilogram rail car hits a spring at the same speed? So again, if we substitute 500,000 for k and simplify from part a, we do get x of t equals negative 0.1 times sine of 10t. But again, the most general case here, we had x of t equals b times sine of the square root of k divided by the mass m times t. So for part b, we substitute 500,000 for k and 10,000 for m, and b will no longer be negative 0.1 because the spring compression will change. So we now know that x of t is equal to b times sine of the square root of 500,000 divided by 10,000 t, 
which simplifies to b sine of 5 square root 2t. And now we can use x prime of 0 equals 1 to determine b, which will give us the new spring compression. We first need to find x prime of t, which I've already done here. x prime of t is equal to b times 5 square root 2 times cosine of 5 square root 2t. Because x prime of 0 is equal to 1, we have b times 5 square root 2 equals 1 because cosine 0 is 1. Dividing both sides by 5 square root 2, we have b equals 1 divided by 5 square root 2. b would actually be negative in the equation, but this is what we need in order to determine the spring compression. The spring compression is 1 divided by 5 square root 2, or approximately 0.1414 meters, if the mass of the rail car is 10,000 kilograms. For part c, if the spring would break if it compresses further than 0.3 meters, what is the maximum mass of a rail car that can hit it at one meter per second? Let's set this up on the next slide. We now have an unknown mass, m, but because now we're looking at a spring compression of 0.3 meters, we know b is negative 0.3. Once again, we now need to find x prime of t, and then we can find m using the initial condition x prime of zero equals one. So x prime of t is shown here, Using x prime of 0 equals 1, we get the equation negative 0.3 times the square root of 500,000 divided by m equals 1. Next, we multiply both sides by negative 10 thirds, square both sides, and m is equal to 500,000 times 9 divided by 100, which is 45,000. We now know the maximum mass is 45,000 kilograms. If the initial velocity is 1 meter per second, and the spring will break if it compresses further than 0.3 meters. And now for the last part, what is the maximum mass of the rail car that can hit the spring without breaking it at two meters per second? So notice now for part D, the initial condition is x prime of zero equals two. So again, setting this up, we still have the same value for B, we have the same spring constant, and now we need to find x prime of T again, which I've done here. Using x prime of zero equals two, we substitute zero for t and set it equal to two. Again, we get a cosine zero, which is one, giving us the equation negative 0.3 times the square root of 500,000 divided by m equals two. And once again, we solve for m. Multiply both sides by negative 10 thirds, square both sides, m is equal to 500,000 times nine divided by 400, which is 12,500. So now, the maximum mass is 12,500 kilograms if the initial velocity is two meters per second. I hope you found this helpful.